Capitol Hill there. But we promised you a live report, and I am going to give it to you. I'm bringing in Harmeet Dillon. Uh, she is a go-getter in California, has been a part of several lawsuits in the state of California, as it has been one of the most restrictive states. And Harmeet, we were just talking about the San Francisco School Board now getting sued by the city of San Francisco. I am interested to hear your thoughts. Well, I'm glad that the city of San Francisco is finally expressing some interest in the needs of the students of our city, but it's a little bit too little too late. We have had a uh, period of the better part of a year now where students in San Francisco have been deprived of an education. Students throughout the state of California, unless the parents are rich, or unless they live in a particularly helpful school district for the last few weeks have been deprived of their education with disastrous results for their education, their mental health, their physical health, and their career advancement and development as students. And so um, City of San Francisco and San Francisco Unified School District have a long history of not educating the students and of focusing on trivia. And I particularly find it interesting that our city, which has been in our county, I should say both, have been probably the most restrictive of any county in California in terms of shutdowns of businesses, hair salons, offices, and everything. And so now all of a sudden they care about the students. Um, I think it's, it's a little bit fake, frankly. Yeah, no, I, I'm definitely curious on this because we were just playing out uh, one of the stories from our sister station, Fox 11 in Los Angeles about El Segunda actually reopening their schools. So why is San Francisco so different than these other locations in California, the same state? Yes, yeah, San Francisco is the epicenter of woke. I like to call it the utopian petri dish of America where every bad liberal idea is tested out here and perpetuated. And of course, in California, our uh, teachers union really controls many of our politicians. And most of California's most senior politicians, from Nancy Pelosi to Gavin Newsom to Kamala Harris and others, came from San Francisco. And so um, they are so woke that they're spending all of their energy as a school board on stripping the names of our American founding fathers and even people like Diane Feinstein from our schools instead of educating the kids. Um, you know, just a few days ago, we saw an op ed in uh, one of our major newspapers, I think it was the Chronicle, uh, about a from, a, from a high school teacher here in San Francisco, who said that Bernie Sanders wearing a puffy coat and these mittens at so-called very important event, the inauguration was a form of white supremacy and white privilege. So this is, a, I mean, where's the talk about math and science and equipping these children to go to college or to get a trade degree it's absent and you know part of the part of the problem here is very few families with children who have any privilege actually raise their children and send them to the public schools of san francisco so most of the victims of this ridiculous shutdown of the schools which are relatively safe compared to everything else under covid are minority children children with disabilities children who are voiceless and politically powerless and so for, for the better part of the school year, I mean, the nonprofit that I found at the Center for American Liberty filed our first lawsuit against this, uh, you know, in the summer. And we waited and we waited and we waited for a judge to rule. He ruled against us. We are in front of the Ninth Circuit um, next month in less than a month. But meanwhile, San Francisco shrugs, does not educate the children. And so now, I mean, by the time that this lawsuit works its way through the court, um, and the teachers union has its say and intervenes probably to talk about the safety of the teachers as opposed to educating the children, uh, it'll be another few months. So I don't know what game is being played here, but it isn't about educating the children. Yeah, that was going to be one of my next uh, questions. Obviously, you've been involved in several lawsuits uh, with the Center for American Liberty, but were you surprised to see this come in from the city itself. I mean, San Francisco is the first city in the state uh, to sue its own school district. Uh, well, what were your thoughts on that? Well, the District of Columbia has done the same thing this week as well. And uh, it is very interesting because normally the school district and the teachers union are, are hand in hand and sorry, the, the leadership of the city. But like I said, it's very curious. Long after every other county 57 other counties allowed hair salons to be open. 
San Francisco did not. We were the last county to allow that. We were the last county to allow pretty much everything. We've had the most restrictive shutdowns from the first day of the shutdown to now. And so naturally, I mean, I don't know why the teachers uh, union and the school district thought that they would have to, you know, get get back to business because all the signals they got from the city have been uh, to string out COVID and use everything to shut us down. And so it is it is kind of mixed messages, I have to say. If I were in the school district, I would be a little surprised by this because San Francisco has been very non-receptive to the civil rights claims of citizens concerning these shutdowns. And what's worst about this is that science, all of the science points to it being safe for children and safe for almost all teachers. And for the few teachers who are vulnerable uh, because of age or health issues, um, accommodations can be made for them. But ultimately, you know, the, the focus of the school district needs to be educating the children and they're not doing that. All right, Harmeet, it looks like we actually uh, lost your shot here, but we appreciate you being here on News Now from Fox. Would love to have you back on the show as, of course, this is a story that's not going away. Oh, we've, we've got you back. Okay, perfect. Uh, I, I do have another question for you since we have you. A anyway, um, Mayor Breed is backing this, and she has faced some criticism in the past uh, alongside Governor Newsom as well as kind of rebelling against their own orders. Um, she came out today and said that the city has done their absolute best in providing for the school district, but the school board is saying, we don't think so. We think that they haven't been much of a help. Uh, did you find it surprising that Mayor Breed was stepping up and kind of siding with the city on this? Of course, she had a huge part in it. Well, she, she does. I mean, she's, it, 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 it's kind of a, you know, unique situation here with San Francisco being the city and the county. So she does work very closely with the Board of Supervisors and she came from that group. Um, look, the school district is kind of the, it's very interesting politically. The school district is kind of the feed, feeder organization, if you will, for our Board of Supervisors and then people go on to higher office. So I suspect there's some politics going on behind the scene, not in a good way you know, inside politics happening there that caused these folks who normally work together to sue one another. I don't think it's about the kids, frankly. If it were, we would have heard London Breed and other concerned city leaders talking about this way before this week. I never heard a peep from any of them before this week about opening the schools, about educating these mainly minority children who are suffering the worst here, children with disabilities. And so um, I'm sure as this story unfolds, we're going to hear more about what happened here to lead to this but um you know the way we are going with the governor signaling just a few days ago that without everybody being vaccinated we can quote unquote forget about schools opening this year uh it does not bode well and if i were a parent of a school child in this district i would be making alternative arrangements right now and right now it is only the children of the wealthy who are being sent to private schools or parochial schools who are getting educated in San Francisco. And last but, uh, last but not least, what do you see as the future for this lawsuit? Any changes anytime soon, you think, in your honest opinion? Well, through the courts, I mean, maybe because it is the city, which is liberal and politically connected, doing it here in the city. So far, other lawsuits have failed. There have been multiple lawsuits uh, filed on serious federal and state civil rights claims that the courts have refused to grant any relief for. So if the city prevails, it will certainly cause an avalanche of litigation in other parts of the state, but it may not be necessary in other parts of the state because you may see this example, if it is successful, causing schools to open up. Every day I get phone calls from parents who are very upset about suicide, ideation, depression, anxiety, and stress of their, of their children, formerly well-functioning children all over the state of California. So I hope they are successful with this lawsuit. All right, Harmeet Dillon, uh, the CEO of the Center for American Liberty. We appreciate you being here on News Now from Fox. Have a great night. Thank you.